Hello everyone. This video would focus on properties of proportions. Before we go over the different properties of proportion, let's have a definition of proportion. We remember that proportion is an equation which states that the two ratios are equal. So if we have A over B, and that is equal to C over D, this whole setup that we have right here is called proportion. Now there are parts that we need to remember with regards to this equation that we have right here. Both B and C are called the means. So I'm just gonna label that um, up here. So B and C are named as the means, while the A and D are the extremes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and label that um, down here. So again, B and C are the means, A and D are the extremes. So that is what we mean by proportion. Now let's look at the four properties of proportions. The first property of proportion is called the cross products property. So if we are given A over B is equal to C over D, we are going to cross multiply them. So that would be BC will be multiplied together and AD will be multiplied together so that we can go ahead and say that A times D is equal to B times C. We may not write the parentheses here. We can just go ahead and say AD is equal to BC. They are just pretty much the same thing. So we, we may not put the parentheses in there. Now others are going to say, can we switch it around? Can we start with BC is equal to AD? Would that be correct? Yes, that would be correct. Now let's look at the second property of proportions. The second property of proportion is called the reciprocal property. If we are given A over B is equal to C over D, then if we flip, when we say reciprocal, if we flip this fraction, so we can go ahead and write B over A. So what I did was I flipped the left side of the equation, A over B, I flipped it, B over A, that is equal to we flip also the right side of the equation that would be D over C. So what we did here was we got the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. Again, reciprocal means we flip it. So A over B, I got B over A. And then I flip the C over D, I got D over C. So this is what we mean by reciprocal property of proportions. Now let's move on to the third property. The third property states that if you interchange the means of a proportion, then you form another true proportion. Remember, A and D are the extremes and B and C are the means. So what are we going to do is we're going to switch the position of B and C right here. So our equation would come out A over. So instead of writing um, B here, we're going to switch it with C and that is equal to B over D. This is the third property of proportion. If you switch the position of B and C, which are the um, means, then this equation that we have here is a true proportion. Now let's move on to the fourth property of proportion. The fourth property states that in a proportion, if you add the value of each ratio's denominator to its numerator, then you form another true proportion. So if we have A over B is equal to C over D, we're going to add the B to the numerator. So this will come out A plus B over B is equal to, we do if we add this B on top or on the numerator, we do the same thing for D here. So that would be C plus D over D. Then we are able to form a true proportion. Now let's take some more examples. 
So we're supposed to complete this statement that we have here and we determine what property. Again, there were four properties that uh, were talked about in the previous slide. So if we have 2 over 3 is equal to 8 over 12, then 3 over 2 is equal to blank. Now notice that this um, 3 and 2 here have been flipped. That means that we are going to switch or flip this fraction as well. So that the one that we write on the blank here would be 12 over 8. And this is what we call as the reciprocal property of proportions. I'm just going to write that down here. Now let's move on to the next example. In this example, we are given 5 over 4 is equal to... 10 over 8, then 5 plus 4 over 4 is equal to blank. Now notice that in this left side of the equation, 4 was added on the numerator. So then we go ahead and add 8 to the numerator, which is 10. So we can go ahead and set this up as 10 plus 8 over 8. So that is how we complete this proportion. And so this is actually the fourth property of proportion. So I'm just going to write it down here. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. So we're given 8 over 6 is equal to 12 over 9. Then 9 times 8, so 9 times 8 is equal to, we actually cross multiplied it. So then we can go ahead and say that this is equal to 6 times 12. Can we switch this around? Yes, we can. So both the extremes here are uh, multiplied together. So then we are going to multiply the means as well. So this is actually the cross product property. So I'm just going to write it down here. Did you get the same answer as this? Good. Perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. So we're given 15 over 20 is equal to 3 over 4. Then 15 over 3. Now, please notice that the... Um, means that we have here were switched around. So instead of three on top, it was moved down here so that we go ahead and have this 15 over three. This means that this 20 should sit in replacement of three so that we can go ahead and write that would be 20 over four. So this is how we complete this proportion. And this is actually based on the third property of proportion. So I'm just going to write that down here. Did you get the same answers as this? Yeah. Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.